Hello, welcome back to uh, part 19 of my journey towards my Bachelor's of Science Information Technology degree from Western Governors University. So today's video is all about two more classes that I've completed this week. The first one is Cloud Foundations, which is C849, and Technical Communication, which is C768. So let's go ahead and start with Cloud Foundations. So to pass this particular class, you need to complete an external exam, a cert if you like, and it's from CompTIA. It's called it's Cloud Essentials Plus. So it's a business level kind of certification. It's kind of foundation. This one is not particularly technical. It's more aimed at business analysts, that kind of stuff. So what you're going to find is a lot of the information in this particular class is not really going to be technical. It's just going to be a lot of terminology, acronyms. Now, what does cloud do? How does it benefit your company? How can it save you money? You know, what are the different types of clouds, uh, so, you know, uh, providers and, um, uh, you know, billing and things like that. So like I said, a lot of businessy type situations that maybe we haven't seen so far in the material, uh, you know, in terms terms of like the technical side of things. So um, for those people that have a uh, kind of cloud experience, know what it is, worked with it before, um, I think you could pass this one fairly quickly and, and kind of that's what I did. Uh, for those people that are brand new to cloud and what it means, um, still not a difficult class. I think you need to work through the material, but you'll be fine. So uh, don't panic. This one isn't a really difficult class by any means, by for any level of uh, experience. So let's talk about the material that's provided for you. So Western Governor University have obviously teamed up with you, Certify again, and all the material they provide you is enough to pass this class. So don't worry about having to go outside of the, you know, externally looking for more stuff to pass. What they have there it, it is enough to pass the class. So the key thing here is there's uh, seven areas or chapters that they've broken it down into. Inside those chapters, there's cards, there's quizzes, there's exercises, there's labs, as always. But the key thing for me here is at the end of each chapter, uh, there's something what they call exam essentials, which is like a glossary. It's like a page or two, but it's a kind of they pick out keywords and keys uh, like terminology, kind of just key information that you need to know. And it kind of gives it away for you. exam essentials. Now, like all comp tier exams, you only really want to learn what's actually on the test. And, you know, there's a lot of material out there and sometimes it's not testing you on what's on the class. So exam essentials is important because what they've done is they've really identified the key areas that you need to learn that's potentially what you're going to be tested on. So my really big tip for this class for this material is make sure you know all the exam essentials on each uh, one of those seven chapters. If you know those and you're pretty comfortable with it, I think you have a really good chance of passing the test and quickly. So definitely look out for that. As always, pre-assessment, post-assessment, practice tests, there's a couple of those. You know, score well on those before you feel like you're ready to go ahead and then, um, you know, obviously schedule your exam. So in terms of scheduling the exam, once you feel like you're comfortable enough, you can click on the little link uh, inside the WGU software and it kind of requesting permission to take the uh, the class. Uh, eventually, you'll get sent a code and you use that code to then go ahead and sign up for the exam. So CompTIA exams are organized through uh, it's Pearson VUE. Uh, that's the kind of prop train company. You go out to their website. If you haven't already got an account, you create one and then basically you put the code in, schedule the exam. Uh, for me, I was quite lucky. I requested the code on Tuesday and I was able to schedule the exam for the following day, the Wednesday. So that was pretty good. My experience has been that it's not always been the case. So maybe it's mid month and that's why I was able to get in straight away. But of course, it's a first come first serve type situation. So if there isn't any available, then you might have to wait a few days. But for me, I was pretty lucky. I was able to schedule it the next day. So the actual exam itself was uh, wasn't too bad an experience. So let me tell you how they you know what they ask you what to expect. Uh, they score this between one hundred and nine hundred with a pass mark of seven twenty. Um, they give you sixty minutes and they give you up to seventy five questions. Now the version of the class I took was CLO 2 There is a slightly older version that I believe they're starting to sunset now, but I would recommend taking the newer version. Uh, two reasons. One, that's kind of what the material that you've studied will focus on. And also, why take an older exam when, you know, it looks better on your resume to have the most recent version, um, you know, of, of, of the cert. So I definitely recommend doing that. Now, the big issue for me with this particular exam was, like I said, uh, you know, kind of maybe you've already figured out was the time. 60 minutes is not a long time to take 75 questions. 
you know, and uh, some of the questions, as always, you know, Comptia's like, if you've done them before, is sometimes they're a sentence or two long. There's trick questions in there. There is, uh, you know, sometimes they take you one direction and actually end up asking you a question in the other direction. So you do have to read the question and obviously you have to look at the answers. It's, you know, multiple choice, um, four choices. Um, all the questions are like that, by the way. You're not getting any PBQs in this situation. It's all multiple choice. So um, that's the only problem I had. I did manage to uh, finish all the questions and get it done, but I bookmarked maybe five or ten questions. I wanted to go back and just review my answers, but the clock ran out, and basically I didn't have enough time to do that. So that was a little frustrating. Um, the good news is I passed. I think I scored 766, something like that. So I was, you know, over the line, pretty comfortable. Um, I did find the exam um, a little tougher than any of the pre-assessment or practice test I took and it's mostly because of the way CompTIA are asked their questions you know the these certified questions are a little bit more direct and to the point CompTIA like I say they try to trick you they try to word it in a way to, to confuse you which is kind of irritating when you really don't have much time if they give you two hours for this class then I wouldn't have a problem with it but obviously because of the shortage of time um, you really don't have a lot of time to read read questions if that makes sense so anyway overall um not too bad for me. I spent two days basically uh, looking at the material, maybe five to 10 hours of total study. And then obviously the next day I took the exam. So maybe I spent three days uh, on this particular class uh, to get it out of the way. Um, I think most people can turn this around in a week. So don't be too daunted by this task or this class. I think you're going to be fine. So let's talk about technical communication, which is class number C768. This particular class is a performance assessment uh, class, which basically means you have to write a paper or two, and it's worth three credit units. In total, there's two tasks or two papers that you have to complete. Um, and actually, it's not too bad. You can turn this one round fairly quickly if you put the time into it. So let's talk about task one, first of all. And it's uh, basically implementation of a technology solution. That's how they kind of label it. And you know, to break that down for you, basically you're gonna create a couple of artifacts and then you're gonna complete like a process and audience analysis of the two artifacts you've created. Um, that probably sounds a little bit more complicated than it actually is, but you're probably looking at about four to five hours, maybe quicker, depending on how quickly um, you, know, you can turn it around. The second task is a little bit more difficult and will take a bit more time. It's, uh, it's called an RFP you're gonna complete, which is uh, basically a request for a proposal. So they're going to give you like an example of a fictional company and some of the key things that they're looking for. And you're going to be like the um, the vendor, the client, uh, you know, the, you know, you're going to provide them with a solution possibly, you know, for one of their issues. or And, uh, you know, you basically complete this request for proposal and there's a number of different sections. And then obviously um, you submit the paper once you're completed. Uh, in total, I spent maybe eight to 10 hours total writing this paper. So it was it was more researching it than actually writing it. And um, like I say, not too bad, though. This 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 class can be turned around in a weekend. And basically, that's what I did. So let me give you some tips for this class. So first of all, let me give my uh, tip my hat to the professors of this particular class. Uh, they are really good. And there's a couple of things here. Like always, you know, when you register for the class, they do send you an introductory email. And there's a link in there to some some you know information that you should follow. If you don't get that email quickly enough, you can go to the actual course material, and there's a link on the side there, and you know um, key tips or you know for the class. And under there, they're gonna there's a link to this like a uh, page that will basically uh, give you things like a template that you can use and a couple of videos that are really good. I mean, they're really good. So basically, this video is about half an hour long, but what it does is it basically breaks it down for you step by step what you need to do for each of the two tasks. And what I did was I basically followed along to the video. I had it up on one screen and I was just basically, as they were doing each section, I was just watching the video and then watched it back afterwards, made sure I had what they uh, were looking for. I used the template they provided, so I made sure I put it in the format and you know, in the style they wanted, and that made it so much simpler. The good thing about this particular, these videos in this kind of like uh, tip sheets that they provide, they also kind of tell you the key areas in the actual course material, the study material that you need to focus on. And, you know, there is a lot of information there, but, you know, why read it all if you don't need it all to pass the class, if that makes sense? So I thought it was really good. They actually said, look at chapter one, whatever it was, and it explained how to do this part of the class or whatever. Um, so absolutely look out for that email or when you look inside the uh, WGU uh, interface there, it's on the right hand side. I think it tips for the class or whatever they call it. You know, you're, you know what I mean? Uh, just click on that and you'll see a, like a basically a study link. Use it because it's gold. It really is. And like I say, I'm very, very grateful for them putting it together because 
like I say, they break it down for you. So definitely follow that. So, um, like I said, probably spent the whole weekend doing it. Maybe, uh, I don't know how many hours combined, 10, 15 hours, quite a bit, but I probably went into a little bit more detail than I needed to. I've looked at some of the forums and people say, keep it simple. And, you know, I, you know, maybe I went a bit overboard, but yeah, that's just my personality. But yep. Um, the other good thing about this class, which I really liked, and I'll tip my hat to whoever's grading the classes, uh, the papers, I got them back really quickly. Sometimes when you put things in task stream, it seems like it takes forever to get the you know, your results back. Uh, this particular class, I put task one in uh, and then within two or three hours, I had it back, you know, which was awesome. And then task two, I actually submitted it um, Saturday evening and I got it back first thing Monday morning, which, you know, I didn't expect anybody to be marking it on a Sunday. You know, I got that. But, you know, the turnaround that quickly, I thought was, you know, really, really good. So full credit to Deutschland Governor University for that. So. It's all I really have for technical communication because I think, you know, if you follow those steps, I think you have exactly what you need to, to complete this class. It's not too bad. So overall, a good week, uh, six credit units down, uh, moving uh, towards my goal. Uh, hopefully, you know, I'll get this done, um, the rest of the degree as soon as possible. But that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed the video as always. Please keep safe out there. I know it's still a kind of crazy world we live in. Um, I hope you're enjoying these videos and um, I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you. Take care.